Hi guys, it's Lynn here. I hope you're having an amazing day. Now today guys, this is just a quick video showing you how to remove the dead leaves on Chlorophytum. And I'll just show you here. This is my hanging basket stand that I have in, in my plant room and office. <laughs> and um, because obviously the hanging basket stand's great for hanging a lot of the uh, Chlorophytums because I have a lot of babies on them, as you can see there. And I have made a video already on how to care for Chlorophytum, commonly known as the spider plant. If you haven't seen that video, then do check the video out. Links up above to that video, um, going in the and also in the description in the about section of this video. Um, do check that out if you want to know a bit more on how to grow Chlorophytum. Very easy, very easy, and very common house plant. And um, I had a question on on a couple of times. On that video people were saying how do you remove the dead leaves they find that common things with um, spider plants is two things one is this where the sort of dead um, brown bits on the edges of the leaves this is very very common I'll explain a bit about that and also the most common thing when obviously this happens they as they grow and produce lots of new growth they're very fast growing they do um, sort of die back like here and people are saying do I just pull it off do I cut it what do I do and Basically, it's really up to you. If you leave this, it's not going to hurt the plant. But I think it's good to remove the, the dead parts of the leaves because not only does it look far aesthetically nicer to look at a plant that's all green rather than all dead leaves at the bottom, but also pests, especially things like green fly mealybugs, can hide in between dead leaves here. This is where they sort of hide a lot in between the dead leaves so it just keeps it cleaner and minimalizes pest damage and I was actually as you can see I just started to remove remove this and I do regular sort of pruning on my plants this is all the growing the majority of plants are inside the house for the winter because I overwinter a lot of the ones that aren't cold hardy inside the house which is why the house looks like a jungle during the winter and, and this plant stand is normally out in our yard and so it's a bit it's a bit crowded but I always go around and prune at least once a week and I thought oh, I might as well make a video because I remember a couple of people asking me about this and this is going to show you what I do. Now all you need to do with removing these leaves, first of all I'm going to speak to you about why this sometimes happens with the, the little um, edges, the very tips of chlorophytums going brown, very common problem not happening on these and there's two reasons why this happens, sorry about the lighting, the sun's coming through and it's a bit difficult to, um, to film here so there's, there's sometimes three different reasons why that happens. One is the air humidity is too dry, which causes the brown tips at the end. It's just down to dry humidity, sometimes increasing the humidity a little bit more. Um, and that often helps to correct the problem. Now, if I, I let this plant go dry, and if this didn't have any of the dry tips on, I let the plant go dry about a month ago, and then I gave it a good water. It started to wilt a bit, gave it a good water, picked up again, and then notice these brown tips appear. So I'm pretty sure in this case, this is just down to um, not being kept watered enough and the dry tips happen. As I say, these are perfectly okay. So I don't think it's the air humidity because it just affected this particular plant. And none of my other ones seem to be affected there. As you can see, the tips tiny bit there but then that's sort of normal anyway when the leaves die back the rest of it looks pretty good now also it can be over fertilizing if you over fertilize chlorophytum it will also produce brown tipping on the edges this is with all house plants not just chlorophytum it's sometimes just a bit of chemical um, burn from too much fertilizer pretty harmless mostly just just remove it and also it can then also be down to being under potted if the plant is too under potted it can um, force it to, to form these little brown bits at the end so there's other reasons as well but that's the main reasons as I say pretty harmless other than aesthetic just just cut it back um, there to tip it back that's pretty much easy now Today I'm going to be showing you about the, the pruning of these with the dead leaves now there's two different ways of removing them now a lot of the time these bottom leaves here that go brown they will come away at the base as you can see that's one I removed before just literally gently pull them away and they will come away now very easy you want to make sure that it just pulls away very easy like that no problem and as I say this is always a place where mealybug likes to hide which is like why I like to remove the brown dead leaves and it just looks so much nicer to see clean looking plants too now if it's a little bit tough to come away as in this case it is here 
which is why I was going to cut it, then what you want to do, just switch the camera around my hand here, is cut, pull it back at the base there and just literally trim it and um, pull it away. And that's really all you have to do. And I say pull away any, any that you can that's going to come away easily enough. And if not, I mean, everyone knows how to cut dead leaves off. So this isn't, isn't really, this is just a really simple video. But the reason why I wanted to do it is a few people saying, you know, they're a bit worried about, do they just leave them or remove them? And I said, well, it's entirely up to you. Personally, it's best to remove them. But um, it's very common. It's just old dead leaves that come away. And as I say here, it's come away pretty easy. That's all you have to do. So I'm going to go carry on then pulling some of these away and cutting some away and show you what it looks like when it's all neatened up. And if you want to remove these little brown tips, you just literally cut them. They're not really an issue. Again, you can just leave them. So there you go, guys. That's it looking a lot better now. Nice and neatly pruned. And as I say, I have a few different types of chlorophytums. And I've grown a few from seed. These ones here are ones I've actually grown from seed. And when you grow chlorophytum from seed, even if you're growing seed from the, the typical most commonly variegated form, like this one here, they always grow green. Um, you, the only time you'll get variegated Chlorophytum is if you're, if you're growing the plantlets that they commonly produce. If you're growing from seed, it'll always be green or green like that. Just a bit of a, a tip there if, you, if you're wondering why um, you're sowing seeds from chlorophytum and it's coming out green, like this one, when it was normally stripy. You could say three different types. This one is the all green one here. But this is actually the one with the, the all, mostly all green with white outer edging, as you can see here, very, very small white outer edging there. And this one is the one with a thick white stripe in the middle there. And this one is the more traditionally commonly seen um, spider plant, the one that's most often seen the variegated, the normal variegated. This one again has more stripes in it than the common normally variegated one. And this one here is the all greens, about four or five different types of chlorophytums. And um, very wonderful. And if you want to know how to grow chlorophytum from seed, I'll also put that video on too. Um, so do check that out, guys. So guys, thanks so much for watching and I want to send you loads of love, heaps of happiness and tons and tons of plant power. As always, my cross the Emerald Isle. Until the next video, bye. Bye.